they were really great about catering to me and specializing a diet that was fit for my body and my needs. When you come see Dr. Nesbaum, you have his whole team here to help you, whether it be cool skull thing, the balloon, the surgery, no matter what it is, they won't stop helping you until you reach your goals. It was the best decision I've ever made. I lost almost 80 pounds. I'm just a happier overall person. My name is Stephanie Ramirez. I'm 28 years old. I struggled with weight my whole life. I had the gastric sleeve done. I lost a total of 100 pounds. I'm actually healthier. No more diabetes, no more hypertensive. I would definitely recommend Dr. Nesbaum. Your weight may not be your fault. It could be a metabolic or hormonal problem. To learn more, come in for a free seminar. Go to NussbaumMedicalCenters.com or call 973-998-9833 to schedule a call. Cimino & Philippone is a New Jersey-based law firm with offices in Morristown and Hazlitt, devoted to providing quality legal representation and personal attention in the areas of residential and commercial real estate, estate planning, and personal injury. Contact Joe Philippone at 732-203-0060 or by email at jphilippone at cf lawfirm.com I was born fast Parisi made me faster I thought I could jump Parisi brought me to new heights I wasn't always quick Parisi made me lightning fast strength was never my strength Parisi changed all that here at Menin Arena. It is the second of three games here tonight on Mars Sussex Sports and what should be a very interesting and fun matchup tonight. The men to Minutemen coming in 1-2-1 and one overall and their record in the Halverson Division at 1-1-1. One, one one. They take on the Montville Mustangs who are 0-2 in Division 1-2 overall on the season. We're glad you could join us here on Mars Sussex Sports. Brett Luthner, Mike Gurness here and Mike, it's a matchup between two teams that, generally speaking, have been pretty close and should be no exception here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And I think tonight it's a matchup of two teams that are trying to find their footing. Um, both teams have only played a handful of games so far this season. You know, four games for Mendham and then three games for Montville. And they've both had their share of shutdowns related to COVID. Um, so it's really going to be a matchup. You know, this is a young Montville team going up against a Mendham team that has won the Haas and Halverson Cup in back-to-back -back years. Um, so, it, you know, they're both trying to kind of find their way here. Um, so it should be very interesting to see what happens. For Mendham, what do you got to look for here in this one? Um, for Mendham, I think the key for them is going to be um, what are they going to get offensively. Um, I think they've they've been pretty good offensively so far this season. They had five goals against KJS, three against Mount Olive. Um, they had a tough loss to Madison, ten to one, and then they came back with a five four win against Roxbury. So I think the key is is long, the key for them really is going to be defense, is keeping the puck out of the net. 
Um, I think if they're able to keep this game, um, if they're able to keep the scoring to a minimum defensively, then they should be in good shape. And on the Montville side, they're on the home team for this one. Yeah, for Montville, um, you know, the opposite. they they got to try to get their offense going here. Um, you know, they won 3-1 to one against Fairlawn in their first game back on January 23rd. They came back this week, played two games against Madison and KJS, scored two and one goals respectively in those games. So for them, it, it's the key is going to be to try to get something going offensively tonight and hopefully get on the board early and build some early momentum. I did not get the officials before the game, so I'll get them between periods. I do not see Dave Pricken tonight. <laughs> he's been a staple here recently, but maybe he's at Skyland. But either way, we are just about set to go here at Menin Arena. Our second of three games tonight. Might have been the same crew as the first game, which would be Tim Miller and Bob Trainer again. We'll check to confirm. But before we get going, Montville in the white jerseys trimmed in green. They're going from left to right. How about these new duds for Mendham? Those are outstanding new uniforms for Mendham. I, it's just, Navy jerseys trimmed in red and white for the Minutemen. They're going from right to left as this puck pops up and we are underway. A different style of number on yeah. the jersey as well. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think that's the thing that stands out to me the most is the design of the numbers there. It's, uh, it's pretty good looking. It is a sublimated jersey. They do have, it's the Mendham logo, the Minuteman logo on the front of the jersey. A different striping pattern along the sides of it. And then the numbers not only are on the back and on the sleeves, but they got them in the upper right corner or left as we see them, but the right shoulders for the players as well. Yeah, these are uh, these some very, very nice threads. And uh, you know, from what we understand, they, this is the first game wearing them. So, yep. uh, you know, hopefully it'll uh, hopefully it correlates to some success on the ice for them, too, after coming off a big win against Roxbury the other night. This is the 25th anniversary of this squad, Mendham. They've won several cup championships in the MCSSIHL and looking to add to their trophy collection. They'll have a little bit of competition, though, with Madison and how they've done this year. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, this Mendham team's the reigning Halverson Cup champions. They got off to a bit of a tough start, but um, I really do think that win against Roxbury kind of signaled a new beginning for them this year. There's a shot to save me early on by Adam, a a Adrian Prelick, I should say. And now out will come the Mustangs. And towards the Minutemen zone. This goes back, whipped around the boards. Gavin Marsh shoots number 12. He started up front with Ian Tampawala, number 25, and Michael Gianco, number 28. The defensemen starting were Matt Gaga, number 2, and Sean Catter, number 10. On the other side, it was Connor Perez, number 9, Michael Chang, number 27, and Austin Bailey, number 32, starting for Montville. The defenseman, Trey Baresic, number 8, and number 29, Matthew Kroll. And, of course, Adrian Prelick in goal. Tim Tampawala at the other end for the Minutemen. Of course, this is the, just yet another of a six pack of games that we have up and down on Mars Sussex Sports. Also have basketball going on. We had a game earlier today, we got one now. There's a shot the same made by Tambuala and the rebound slings into the corner. And front score! Montville on the board first. They lead 1-0. I was tipped up high. Uh, just a turnaround shot and a rebound. So, two minutes and two seconds in. Montville on the board first. And that's that's a big one there for Montville. As I talked about before the broadcast, they're, they've struggled a little bit offensively to start the season this year. But, um, you know, it's always good to get an go early goal here and build a little momentum. West Morris in basketball survived Roxbury. And 
Here's a pass on a cross. Ooh, that's the, got a little bit close the there. Goal scored by number nine, Connor Perez. With assist from number 32, Bailey, and number 29, Crowell. And we're here in the background. Goal, 202 of the first period. That's Perez. As this Bailey, goes all the way Crowell, down for an icing. And a face off to come. So that goal, once again, it's Perez getting the goal. Connor Perez is third of the season. From Bailey and Crowell at 202. Yeah, and Perez has been a uh, been a very good player for Monfield so far this season. He's leading the way on that team with three goals so far. He's got three of now the seven goals that the Mustangs have scored. Stick handle through the zone. Matt Goggin also plays for the Jersey Hitmen and is a dangerous presence out there. Being in front broken up. Yeah, that was impressive how Goggin carried the puck into the zone. He was being attacked by like two or three different guys and he just maintained control of the puck the whole way. That was uh, pretty impressive. Bouncer comes up and out to center and out to skate on. This is Trey Barasic, number eight. Centering feed goes all the way through. Loose still in the zone. Aiden Ingle. He couldn't get a shot off. Rebound out to center. Ingle wants some more. Steps around one. Ingle moves in. Aiden Ingle! And it goes wide. Penalty call, though, coming up. Ingle couldn't get a clean shot off. He was slashed at. And the power play will be on for Montville. Good work there by Aiden Engel, breaking into the zone, um, creating a little space and drawing the penalty. Um, and now it's an opportunity here on the power play to make this a two-goal lead. 4.50 time, no, check that, 3.50 time of the penalty. Into the penalty box is the number 10 of Sean Cato. Puck being worked around right now. The perimeter is a wrist shot. Score through a screen. Trey Barisic scores it. It's 2-0 Mustangs. What a start for Montville here. Two goals in a span of about a minute and in about two minutes, really. Um, really, really good start. And, uh, you know, especially for them, they've had trouble offensively, and now they got two goals to start here against a good Mendham team. Might have been tipped in front, but I believe that's going to be Barisic's goal. Yeah, Barisic definitely had the shot there. I couldn't tell if there was any deflection in front, but we will wait for the announcement. There was definitely traffic. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that was good work by them on the power play there. Um, getting traffic in front of the net, that's exactly what you want to do. Around the net this goes. Grant McClung, number 24. It's up and out to center and then sent on further. In the zone, sharp angle shot goes up and wide. Montville goal, a power play goal, scored by number eight, Terry Barisic. I'm sorry, Barisic, not Barisic. And number 27, Chang. Time of the penalty. Excuse me, time of the goal, 4-0-1 of the first period. That's Barisic from Perez and Chang on the power play. Now the move in, there's a shot in the same table while he holds on. So Perez and Chang get the assists. That's now a uh, goal and an assist tonight for Perez, who's been involved in both, both goals for Montville. Moved around the boards and then out to center. Warren held it at the point and then that fanned on and came out of his own. And offside is going to bring it out to the neutral zone. So for Trey Barisic, the junior. His first point of the season. In fact, that's his first career goal. Did not play as a freshman, came out as a sophomore last year at four assists. So Trey Barisic with his first career goal, 
congratulations to him. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, for, for Montville, it's, uh, this has been about as good of a start as you could have hoped for. Mm -hmm. They've kept the play down in the attacking end for the most part. Um, I'm sure Coach Alex Beatrice has got to be very pleased with what he's seeing so far. As Kevin, we to paraphrase Kevin Weeks, welcome to the Mars. He does that with every, anybody who gets a first goal on NHL tonight. <laughs> you know, welcome to the National. He doesn't say hockey league; he just says to the National. <laughs> nice. So welcome to the Mars, and that's going to be whistled down. Stop it to play with 9:25 to go here in the first. Ooh, we just got a game added. Did we? Yes. Tomorrow at 6.15. Bouncing puck goes wide. And and here's the thing. is George George sends me the text, and he's like, it's yours if you want it. I'm like, well, wait. What do you think? Wait till I tell you the matchup. Oh, this is going to be a fun one tomorrow, boys and girls. Can I guess which teams are playing? You can certainly guess, and you're gonna, you might want to join me for it too. Um, I'm pretty sure I know who it is. It's uh, Morristown, Morristown Beard, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I had got a coach from, uh, <laughs> I got a text from Coach Scott Green at Morristown Beard, uh, sending me their lineup for tomorrow night. So uh, that'll be, that's always a good one. Always a good oh, yeah. rivalry between those two. So that's a fun. Thank you, George. Yeah, that's always in Morristown Beard. I mean, anyone who's uh, who listened to me in our preseason preview special with George uh, before the season, or if you've heard anything I've said this year, um, Morristown Beard's a team I'm very high on. They they just have so much speed and so much skill. Um, it's a shame they're not going to get a state tournament because I think they really would have had a chance to really be the first team. They're probably the best team in non-public that would have had a chance to break through that Gordon Conference wall in the non-public tournament. Probably the best team in a while that's had a chance to do that. Um, so it's unfortunate yeah. they don't get to do that this year, but nonetheless, very good team. Shot goes wide, rebound to the near side boards. To the blue line, and it'll come out to center. On the boards to the far side of the ice. A collision there. Owen O'Hara puts a man down to the ice. Now moved ahead a little bit too far. It's out on the reach of Aiden Engel and goes down. Oh, but that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun one tomorrow night at 615. It was supposed to be a completely different game, but oh now <laughs> business is picked up. Men in division tomorrow night here at Men in Arena. You can never beat that anytime you get a uh, men in division matchup. Um, you know, it, it's nothing beats it. And especially having some fans in the building now, it'll make it even more special. I'll make it a lot of fun. Puck goes around the boards. And it up and all the way down, no icing. Quite a bit of physicality here yeah. the last couple of minutes here. It's really seemed to pick up. Now the move on out. The skate ahead, slamming on the brakes and shooting his aching head, and he missed the top part. Wanted to go high, and it got a little too high. But that aching head still blistered that shot. Here's a shot the other way. Tambuala the same. You're hearing on net in the background, and I think that's going to become Montville's uh, game plan here is to throw everything they can at Tim Tambuala. Probably wanting to take advantage of, of – uh, he's a big goalie, Tambuala. And sometimes oh, yeah. with those taller goalies, you want to take advantage of the size against them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with ever making sure you're putting shots on net. I mean, that's the only way you're going to score is by putting it on net. So 
And there you go. There's another example. Save made by Tampa Wallace. He slid across. And here's a big target in net. So it's like you just put a shot on him and you maybe you get a rebound. That shot hit the post. Near side boards. Man goes down. Penalty call coming. Head to the sky for Matt Cooley. He's going to the box power play in Muttville. Interference is going to be a call. Time and a penalty is 9-22. Astute Academics of Randolph, let us help you crush your SAT, ACT, and stand out to college admissions counselors. Visit astuteacademics.com. And while you're at it, go to Atlantic College Planning if you want to identify the best college for you and learn how to afford it. Reach out to Hugh McDonald. H. McDonald at AtlanticCollegePlanning.com. Short 9-22. Mottville back to the power play, but they're going to have to defend this here. Short and a shot blocked off. Eight shots to three. Mottville behind, uh, in favor, I should say. And in favor on the scoring part of things, 2-0. Allen after it, Tristan Aikenhead tried to center out in front, but that's broken up. Rebound and coming out with this is Connor Perez. From center, it's just dumped in by Austin Bailey. He'll go off for a change. Menden had an opportunity. We'll clear up it all the way down, and I think a penalty call? And there's the whistle. I feel like nobody on the ice knew what was happening there. <laughs> Slashing the call. And into the penalty box is going to go the number nine for Montville, Connor Perez. All play four and four for a minute. Perez was uh, pleading his case to the official there before going into the box, but to no avail. On the face off, this is going to be up and out to center on a skate in and then dumped into the zone by Aiden Engel. Back in the zone, right to Tambuala, who puts down. Keeping an eye on the other game in the MCSSIHL, of course, earlier in this division, Madison took care of KS, uh, KJS, I should say, uh, by a score of 5 nothing. Right now, they have a Charette division matchup going on. High Point Wallkill Valley against Newton Lenape Valley. That's a save and a hold on. And the crowd not happy about something. And right now, that game is in the second, midway through the second period, 2-1. High Point, Wallkill Valley. The, I believe they call them the Red Army, or at least I thought that was their supporters. No, that's, I think that's what they go by. Oh, and, uh, okay. Yeah, and that's, that's always a good matchup, them and Newton Lenape Valley. Always a uh, nice little Sussex County battle between those two. I tell you what, then, the next time I call a High Point, Wallkill Valley game, I will wear to that game my Soviet Central Red Army jersey. That's that's an interesting item to have. <laughs> I got it and supplemented and everything. Not the official one, but it, right. uh, it's it's still a it, it's an accurate replica of it, uh, with Alexander Mogilny in Cyrillic on the back. Oh, nice, Alexander Mogilny. Can't go wrong with that one. Nope. I had a choice of several. I could have gone for Tisoff or Tretiak or uh, I'm like, yeah, let me do Mogilny. Always enjoyed Mogilny uh, back in the day when he was with the Devils. Yeah, oh, he was amazing when he. Defected and came over to the Sabres. This puck gets sent yep. up and out. I mean, he was such a dynamic player. Yes, he sure was. Him and Tim Mussolini still have the rookie record for most goals in a season. 76. Which is crazy enough. That puck deflected to the near side boards. Yeah, it's a wrist shot save made and held on to by Prelick getting the whistle with 2.49 to go here in the first period.
Gorge Point Plumbing, and it says the no job too big or too small for Gorge Point Plumbing. Contact Rich Muha, 908-339-2430 for amazing service at an affordable price. In front score on the doorstep. And on the power play, the Minutemen have pulled one back. It's now 2-1. Looks like that was uh, Griffin Joseph back in front there, just uh, knocking home uh, pass right in the slot. Look at it again. Oh yeah, nice tip in front. Josephek will get the goal on the deflection. 12-18 time at a goal. And it's now back in the zone once more. This is Matt Cooley. Around the net. Josephek's second goal of the season. And really an important one at this juncture. Absolutely. I um, mean, it was good for Mendham because the, I thought the last couple minutes they finally got some sustained possession in the offensive zone. And here's a two-on-one going the other way and a save made by Prowlin Kenny holds on with 2.11 to go here in the first. For them, it's really, for Mendham, it's really just a matter of, uh, you know, now you're, you're it's just a one goal game at this point. You know, you get another bounce and you're tied. So, uh, very, very big moment in the game there for them to to get a goal and get a little positive momentum going. Mendham goal, the power play goal. Now yeah, this bounces Griffin out. Joseph Here goes Austin Bailey. This is from number two, Goggin. Number 11, Aikenhead. Goggin and Aikenhead on the assists of Joseph X, second in the season at 12 18. Onside skating to the zone, putting on the brink. Gavin Marshutes. Play along the board. Two on two battle coming out of all this. Oh, the puck that pops free, but not out of the zone. Trying to get to it and doing so. And the skate out by the number 18, Owen O'Hara. Puck poked around a little bit. Picked up by the number 25, Ian Tambuala. Snaps the pass long. It's going to go all the way down for icing. And we got a stoppage with 124 to go here in the first period. Base off will come to the left of goaltender Tim Tambuala. With the way the arena staff is around, it seems like we're going to get an ice cut after this period. A three on two now the other way, and a shot save made. Aiken had tried to find it through the screen, but Prelink was ready. 1-12 to go here in the first. I say that because uh, some of the arena staff standing near the Zamboni door. It's always a good clue that they're going to be coming out shortly. Which means we get the longer break in this period. We were thankful for the first intermission break last night because that game between Morris Knowles and Mumps and Fairhaven was just electric. Yeah, that was the type of game where you wish you had an ice cut between uh, in both intermissions yeah. last night because it was just so up and down and fast paced. Held at the blue line, shot block, and here goes Aikenhead the other way. He's got some speed. Tristan Aikenhead moves in, score! Tristan Aikenhead using his body to shield off and score, and we're tied at two. That was a highlight reel goal there from Tristan Aikenhead. Uh, everything about it was just beautiful, the way he was able to beat his man and make that move. I just excellent body position for Aikenhead. Who gets goal number five on the season. And... Well, we're all level, folks. And now a chance again for the Minutemen. Onside, which Tambuala feeds across. And then not able to get the pass off that time. I believe it was Robert Bruin, number 21. Or it might have been the 28 of Michael Gianco. Tried to feed it out in front. That puck just wouldn't settle down for him. So the stoppage of play with 21 seconds to go in the period. Got to love these last couple of minutes here for Mendham. They've really uh, tilted the ice a little bit here um, after falling behind 2-0, and now, now we got a tie game. 
Uh, I'd say it's skate out two on two the other way. Good stand up check that time by Brandon Wienerman, number five. There's a play out in front that's deflected, and now that will finish out the period. Long shot anyway. Goes in the net, but it's not going to count. And then some conversation afterwards. Nakin Head is having a word, but that will finish out period number one. Shots on goal in the first period. Mendham had nine and eight for the Mustangs. Our score after one period of play, it's the Mendham Minutemen two and the Montville Mustangs two. You're watching the MCSS IHL right here. I'm Morris Sussex Sports. Sports medicine is the care of athletes, college athletes, professional athletes, amateur athletes, and we see a lot of weekend warriors. At the Sports Medicine Center, we're up to date on all the latest techniques, both surgical and non-surgical treatment options for treating all sorts of injuries. It's important to make the diagnosis, make it quickly, and start the ball rolling with the treatment. If you can get an MRI done the same day of your injury, a lot of times that's gonna help get that treatment started in the right direction instead of waiting two, three weeks. I think reassurance, making the diagnosis and coming up with a good plan for that particular athlete is a very good thing. It helps to get the folks back on track and limits how discouraged they can actually be from the injury. Patient education is important. We want the patient to be part of the treatment plan and having the patient have an understanding of what their injury is, what their treatment options are, that helps them to get back to the sport that they love. We have doctors with all different uh, specialties within sports medicine, state-of-the-art concussion care, regenerative medicine, and then of course we have our orthopedic surgeons. If something needs to be fixed, uh, we can fix it, more than likely in a minimally invasive uh, fashion. With the arthroscopic and minimally invasive procedures, we're able to do much of this surgery inside the joint without having to damage any of the surrounding tissue. It allows an athlete to return to sports much quicker. We're seeing an excellent result with regenerative medicine. Ligament injuries that would normally have taken six to eight weeks, now we're seeing two to three week recovery periods. It gives me great pleasure to be able to treat an athlete and see them succeed back on the field. The Nussbaum Weight Loss Center is actually designed to help patients whether they have five pounds to lose or 500 pounds to lose. They're very helpful with um, explaining everything. You feel very comfortable. They walk you through everything. I am now the person I always knew I was inside. I lost about 100 pounds. Altogether, I've lost 80 pounds. I lost about 100 pounds. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nussbaum, for giving me my life back. I'm Dr. Michael Nussbaum. If you're struggling to lose weight, call us at the Nussbaum. is over. Your connection is here. In areas all over Sussex County, Planet Network's fiber is now a reality. In Sparta, Newton, Hampton, Lafayette, Andover, Byram, and Franklin, we've begun installing high-speed fiber in these towns, and it's changing everything. Much faster, more reliable, and less expensive than your current plan. Don't settle for slow. Planet Network's fiber is up to 300 times faster than your cable company and up to 500 times faster than your phone company for less money. If you see one of these flyers on your door, your home is ready to be connected. If you want Planet Networks to build in your neighborhood, visit GetPlanetFiber.com and let us know. We'll build where the demand is greatest. It's a new day in Sussex County, and the Internet will never be the same. Get connected at GetPlanetFiber.com. That's GetPlanetFiber.com. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait.
Rich Latman, Realtor with Keelan Latman, Sotheby's International Realty, enjoys helping clients through the process of selling their home and finding their dream home. Whether you need more space, are a first time home buyer, or ready to downsize, Rich can help. Rich is a National Association of Realtors Circle of Excellence Award winner and one of the top producers in his area. With Rich, you can always expect expert analysis, excellent service, and exceptional results. For all real estate in Morris and Somerset counties, contact Rich Latman at 908-839-8487 or by email at rlatman at klsir.com. So it's been four years since I got the Neograft hair transplant procedure done, and I look and feel good when I look in the mirror. Guys, I know there's a lot of cures out there for hair loss, but the best solution is to ask your doctor about the Neograft hair transplant. There's no linear scar, little to no downtime, and it's your own hair going back on your head, and that is amazing. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Nussbaum. If you're struggling with thinning hair or hair loss, we can help you. Visit us at myfullhair.com. At Ivy Rehab, we're here for you after your surgery. We're here when you're in a rush. When you're in pain. When you're aching. When you don't have a prescription. We're here to get to the root cause of your pain instead of just masking your symptoms. We're here. We are here. We're over there too. We're all over. So come to Ivy Rehab first. We'll be here for you. No matter how hard I worked, there was just this little bit of area of fat that I just wasn't happy with. My lower back, around my tummy, just places that no amount of exercise or diet were gonna change. Couldn't do it on my own, and the cool sculpting procedure got me what I was looking for. Cool sculpting is a patented cooling technology that targets and kills fat cells with no surgery or downtime. Your clinician will work with you to develop a treatment plan personalized to your specific fat reduction goals. Each treatment lasts as little as 35 minutes. During treatment, your cool sculpting clinician will first attach the applicator. This non-invasive procedure freezes the fat away without harming the skin. After treatment, you can immediately return to your normal daily activities. The results from cool sculpting are undeniable, but now Dr. Nussbaum and his team are taking it a step further by offering custom medical weight loss with cool sculpting. The MyCool Diet program is the first of its kind. By pairing doctor supervised weight loss with cool sculpting technology, patients will lose the weight fast and keep it off even longer. Now's the time to see a slimmer you. Take the first step and get your cool sculpting consultation today. Growing up, Brian Riley absolutely loved sports and competition. He remembers his dad telling him that if he wanted to be better, he need to practice more and work harder. So in high school, when he heard the Vince Lombardi quote, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. It truly resonated with him and that work ethic has translated into serving his clients better than many in the financial field. While Brian's industry experience and credentials are vast, he's quick to tell his clients, the fact that there are a bunch of letters behind my name doesn't mean that I'm smarter than anyone else. It simply means that I've been willing to take the time to invest in myself so that I could better serve them. And for me, being of service to others is the single most important thing in my life today. Getting the opportunity to work closely with families and businesses with complex needs, helping them to define their long-term goals, and providing them with meaningful solutions is a thrill for Brian. It makes him feel like he's back on the athletic field again. 
For a free financial consultation, contact Brian Riley at bryley at financialguide.com or call him at 973-738. Your future, it's on. Goals are on. Learning is on. CCM, the County College of Morris. Online. On point. On your terms. Over 80 majors. Major help. With career guidance. Number one in alumni salaries in New Jersey. Success. It's on. With CCM, the County College of Morris. Sign up now for summer and fall. My name is Mickey Gall, and I'm a UFC fighter. What I love most about being a UFC fighter and being an MMA fighter is I think it's the ultimate expression. It's the ultimate sport. I go to Below Body Bar because as hard as I train, I need to recover just as hard. And Below Body Bar has all the necessary recovery equipment. They have cryotherapy, massage, infrared sauna, cryo spa treatment, and a whole lot more. I'm Mickey Gall, and I love Below Body Bar. Bloja Cohen LLC is a law firm located in Chester, New Jersey. Although we are local, we provide legal services to businesses, entrepreneurs, governmental entities, and school boards statewide. We provide big firm quality work, but do so with a small firm feel and flexible pricing structure. Our specialties include employment law, labor relations, and commercial litigation. At Bloja Cohen, we are proud to support the local athletes in our community. the goal we reset and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings Santeda brings it right past two defenders look at the speed in the open ice Santeda great stick handling great shot here's Kalani in the end zone it is caught charge right for the pass here's a shot right in front score back here at Menon Arena we're getting ready for the start of the second period a 2-2 first period between Montville and Mendham before we get started we want to let you all know then we have this little thing called selfie, the Mars Sussex Sports selfie. Here's how we do it. Take a picture in front of the TV. Make sure you or family members or pets are involved in it. We want to see you and not just the screen. Post that selfie on Twitter using the hashtag Morris Sussex Sports. Again, hashtag Morris Sussex Sports. Don't forget the hashtag. And of course, we invite you to like this game. Follow us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter too, at Mars Sports. Uh, subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell so you're involved with Mars Sussex Sports all season long. Brett Luther, Mike Gurn is here with you. Second period soon to start. And, uh, well, it was a, a really a tale of two halves of that period. Montville gets off the lean and come back from end. Yeah, absolutely. And you got to love the way Mendham finished that period there. Um, I thought they really started to control play there in the last couple of minutes after a nice little Montville surge there in the beginning. Now what you look for to start the second period is how does Montville respond from that? Um, you know, it's obviously a little deflating to have a two-goal lead evaporate like that, but they got to keep in mind there's still 30 minutes of hockey left to play here. You know, you start off the second period, you know, with a good shift and take it from there. Both teams, uh, it's close in shots on goal. No carryover power play time. And so we will get back to this hockey action in just a moment. I'll tell you, this game is brought to you by Mottenville Dental Associates. Dr. Spatson provides the safest and most advanced treatments using state-of-the-art technology, including dental implants, simple and complex tooth extractions, dentures, Invisalign orthodontics, veneers, teeth whitening, and a full array of cosmetic dentistry treatments, as well as urgent care for toothaches, broken or lost fillings and crowns, and other emergency care needs. Visit MottevilleDentalAssociates.com or call 973 575 55-55. This game also brought to you by Rich Blackman of Keelan & Latman Sotheby's International Realty. For any real estate in Mars, Somerset counties, contact Rich Latman at 908-839-8487 or rlatman at klsir.com. -S Second period underway. Montville going from right to left in the white jerseys trimmed in green. The new uniforms, the new jerseys of Mendham. Navy blue trimmed in red and white. They're going from left to right. 
Puck comes out to center, shot blocked off towards the corner. Austin Bailey then tries to throw out in front, couldn't get it where he wanted to go. Rebound moved along towards the blue line and kept in. Picking the puck up, Michael Chang. Thrown out in front, but that's broken up. George Muha is watching now at home. Hopefully he gets a selfie on. And by the way, George, we've got an idea. Speaking of these um, Mendham jerseys, you know, maybe we can get a close-up on them at one point during this period. But um, Mike and I, I think, are going to have to do a little bit of a – we need to do a little bit of a, a, of a cast or something like that here on Mars Sussex Sports of the top ten jerseys in the MCSSIHL. I think we need to do that. I, I agree. I think it's got to happen. It would be a lot of fun because I think you got a lot of good uniforms to choose from in yep. this area. I, that would be something that we can shoot. I mean, we can even do it on location here before a game that we're going to do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That would yeah, be a lot of I, fun. That's an idea. Yeah. Just a little extra Live something. on location from uh, Men in Arena. You know? Or it doesn't even have to be live. We could pre-record it. That's a bump from behind. And away goes Mottville the other way. Mendham wanted a penalty call, none given. Skate the other way, score! Christopher Amelino and the Mustangs back up 3-2. Big goal there for Montville. As I talked about before the period started, you want to see a response from them, and there you go. Um, you know, obviously I'm sure the Mendham bench is not exactly pleased that there wasn't a call there. But nonetheless, Montville takes advantage of that three-on-one and Christopher Armolino with the goal to put them back in the lead. First career goal for Christopher Armolino. And he puts the Mustangs back in front. Of the goal, scored by number 13, Chris Armolino. Time of the goal, 154 of the second period. Calling it an unassisted goal. Unassisted. That's Armolino, unassisted at 154. And, and now a bench warning goes against Mendham. Yeah, Mendham uh, still, still very hot over that non-call before that goal. So the bench warning given. Armolino's first career goal. It's an unassisted goal. Although maybe you look at replay, it might have been an assist on it, who knows. But definitely came from the from the bump from behind. And that's what Mendham's arguing about. This goes all the way down. I mean, it wasn't that heavy of a bump. There's a big hit put on there. And I think business is going to pick up, my friend. Yeah, it sure looks that way. And going back to that call, it, yeah, you're right. It wasn't a very big bump from behind, but I do. But I understand yep. why Mendham has a beef on that call. Um, I'd love to see a replay of it, but you know, I, I, it's one of those ones where it's not vicious enough to where, you know, I, I understand them not calling it. We'll get, I mean, it goes all the way down. We'll see it post game. That's for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you know, we, he, I mean, we did have it on the. Re oh, yeah, that's why you don't have a monitor down there. I, I, I'm yeah. hogging them. I'm hogging. Them. This goes all the way down for icing. All and that's I, all I have to rely on over here is just my uh, my eyes. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm hogging them. I got two. I sit down. I got one. I stand up. I got one. So that's that's my. You know, I, Vinny, give me the superstar treatment. If I wanted to, I could pull up the uh, live stream on my Good, iPad yeah, here. Yeah, that's a, that's you know what? Idea. I didn't even think of that. I might, I might do that. There you go. Either that or you and I switch spots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll just go over there. Here's a long pass and on ahead. You can actually rewind it since it's on YouTube. You'll that's be able true. to see it. So. That's what I do whenever I, whenever I watch the games from home and I cover them. I always do that. Here's Michael Chang moving in. And it's saved by Tampa Wall and he holds. If I may, I just want to give a quick shout out here to Montville Athletic Director Wayne Guarino, who I'm sure is uh, I'm sure he's at home watching if he's not here. Um, he's always very uh, welcoming of all of us in the media and me specifically because I spend a lot of time over at Montville with uh, my tap into Montville coverage. So big shout out to him and uh, thank you to him for uh, always uh, having us around. 
I have not come across one athletic director, whether it's in the MCSS IHL or in uh, the Northwest Jersey Athletic, Asso uh, athletic Conference, that has been uh, anything less than completely helpful. Oh, yeah. They're, they're all very good. It's, it's just, it, 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 again, we said in the first period, it makes my job a lot easier. It's always good whenever you can walk into, you know, a school, a rink, a gym, football field, whatever, wherever the athletic contest is happening, knowing that, you know, you feel welcome there. And yeah. That's always important to us in the media because, you know, sometimes it doesn't always feel that way. But right. um, in this area, you never have to worry about that. In this league, in this area, you know, Morris and Sussex counties, yeah, absolutely. Yes. I mean, when I was first, I, I mean, I've been broadcasting for 11 years, and when I was first starting out, even though some schools would say yes, there was always a little bit of trepidation going on. Uh, more recently, that's gone away. And it's just, it's so, so much easier when, you know, we go, we go to a, a venue and everybody there, all the personnel, are just they, they're so helpful in, in getting whatever's needed. And, you know, I mean, again, we always say the stars are the athletes on the playing surface, as this is an offsides call. The stars are the ones out there on the playing surface right now. And it's, you know, by the athletic directors and coaches and personnel helping us you know, helping us out, it, it just makes it enjoyable for everyone around, and, and we love covering every single school here. Yep, and that's that's what makes it fun. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's always good when people are uh, willing to help you out because we obviously have a tough job, and, uh, you know, it's, it's great uh, when everybody appreciates it and is willing to help. Right. Oh, long pass intercepted that. Good job, Matthew Trafari, number 17. Hey, listen, it's not a job when you enjoy what you're doing. And Absolutely. Boy, oh boy, do I enjoy what I'm doing. That's so do I. This is fun. This ain't working. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Vinny might have just given me a look as if I'm crazy, but that's another story. <laughs> well, he, he's got the tough job, so. Uh, know, he's, yeah, he's definitely got the tough job. This goes all the way down for icing. He's got to make us sound good yep. as well as make the game look good. You know, so he's, uh, he's in the high pressure situation. We just here and talk. We just sit here and talk. But I, I tell you why, Vincenzo does a great job. Yes, ditto. He's uh, always does good work here. Puck comes along and out comes Mendham the other way. Nice little chip. He'll move into the zone on side. Gianco feeds in front just across the crease. Bouncing puck to the blue line and out to center. Now back further. Woo. That almost caught the referee in the skate. Gianco into the zone. Centering feed in front is broken up. Good play that time by Owen O'Hara. Now a chip off the wall and sent out of the zone. I almost think that, I don't think they have a hockey program, but these uniforms would be similar to what the Manhattan Jazz offside, what the Manhattan Jaspers would have. I think a similar color scheme for them too. Stoppage play with 8.45 to go here in the second period. Mark Blount, LLC, those law offices, they're a law firm that focuses on litigation, labor, land use, construction litigation, real estate, and business transactions. Contact Mark today and Blount at bluntlawoffice.com. By the way, George Muha sent me a text. He heard the suggestion and he likes it. I knew he would. Yes, we got coming up soon. Stay tuned, folks. Will your team make the list? I preface it with this. I I never have seen – well, no, I shouldn't say that. I have not seen one bad uniform at the high school level. Yes. Uh, I haven't. Uh, I, I have, but we won't disclose it. No. <laughs> I've seen some dandies, one of them out there tonight. Nice move through and a shot just behind. It did not go in. Stays outside of the net. The opportunity for Michael Chang is denied. 
tell you what, Michael Chang has been uh, very impressive in the couple games I've seen for Montville this season. He's, uh, you know, a sophomore. He seems like he's a pretty good forward for them going forward. Face-off will come to the right of Tim Tambuala. From the straw, puck worked up towards the blue line and then out to center. A bouncing puck that's going to be spun into the zone. That by the number 23 of Matt Cooley. Around the boards. 3 to our score. Five different goal scorers here this afternoon, this evening, I should say. Puck comes up and out to center. In the zone, that shot blocked off. Montville goal scorers, Connor Perez, Trey Barisic getting his first career goal. And Christopher Armelino getting his first career goal. On the Mendham side, it's been Griffin Josephek and Tristan Aikenhead. That's a loose puck that's going to be cleared up and away. And out come the Minutemen. It's going to be a one-on-two skate. Shot from distance. Pad save made for Alec. The rebound sits into the corner. Gathered and flung up the boards, but not out. A keep that time by Shane McCarthy. Bouncing puck will come out to center. Mac Goggin knocking it down out of midair, trying to move the puck forward. Now it is moved forward. Away goes Gianco. Gianco slides his way through, and another puck knocked off at the last moment. Gianco looks the center, intended that time for our march shoots, but it couldn't get to his stick. Now instead, Goggin open, and a save made by Prelick. Goggin behind the net, takes a look, and that's intercepted. But not out of his own. Goggin centering feed. Save made and the rebound steered away as on the doorstep was Marsh shoots after the Gianco shot. In front of the shot, it's up and over the bar. Getting a piece of it, Pralik. 6-12 to go in the second period. Still 3-2. Mustangs. Tell you what, I got a kick out of looking over at the Montville bench or uh, the Mendon bench and seeing Coach John Kovacs. He just put his he just put his arms up right after that shot went over the bar. Like, what do we have to do to get a goal here? That was quite a sequence. They're actually saying he didn't get a piece. It was just shot over the bar. So puck comes out to center and then flung right back in. It's not often that I see Matt Goggin uh, miss the net from that range, but unfortunately on that shot, he bust out the nine iron. Yeah. There's a penalty behind the play. As Connor Perez is going to go to the penalty box. Hauling down Grant McClung. That's one of those where you just look and you're just like, oh, man, he stepped on my stick. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you can do to plead your case. I And, and having... That was the favorite argument when I used to referee inline hockey. The favorite argument of a lot of the players, like, well, he stepped on my stick. And obviously, an inline, it's, that's an easy one to do. Good poke check. Up and out of his own, trying to break away is Austin Bailey. Bailey into the zone. Backhand shot goes wide. Rebound into the corner. Chang's got it. Now down low. It's a shame uh, Bailey uh, had a hard time kind of corralling that puck as he came through the zone because he had Michael Chang. If he was able to get the puck over to him, he was wide open. Minutemen set things up at the blue line. Blake Stevens, number four, throws wide. Mac Goggins got it out. Diagonal pass in front of what a save made by Pralik. Pralik got over, got over so quick on that. This is deflected up and out to center. Austin Bailey with a good job. Dumped back in, delayed offside as the Minutemen go on a line change. As in, and then this puck bounces out to center. Good job cutting the puck off, though. Grant McClung. McClung into the Mustang zone. McClung shot blocked off. Bouncing around in the slot. And finally swept away to the blue line and out to center. Back on this is Tristan Aikenhead. Goes down the middle. Aikenhead goes wide. Near sideboard, slung in further by Sean Cato. Tie up in the corner. Still the battle is on. Finally coming away with this is Michael Gianco. Aikenhead goes behind the net. Thought about taking the shot and then peels it up top. Diagonal pass, missed the mark intended for Sean Cato. 
Behind the net, centering feet in front. Cato gets it, but it doesn't stay in. Puck out to center. 16 to go on the power play. Kept at the blue line here by McClung. Goes in behind the net. A centering feed in front by Marshutes is deflected away. This is gathered and sent all the way down. Power play is over. Very active power play at that. But the Minutemen could not score on it. They are now one for two with the man advantage. Here's a pass across. That's broken up. And Michael Chang goes the other way. Chang into the zone. Stick lifted out. The Minutemen start back. Here's Matt Goggin. Goggin puts on the brakes. Takes a look. Throws back to the blue line. Where a shot deflected to the near side corner. Getting bumped was Aikenhead. Puck goes in the corner. Aikenhead's got it again. Tristan Aikenhead giving a bump there by Austin Bailey. Far side corner. Matthew Trafari comes away with the puck. Blue line and kept in. Good effort that time by Sean Cato. A tie up in the corner coming in to help out is Michael Chang. Puck gets worked free and finally Chang half boards and all the way down. This is going to go for icing and the whistle with 2.52 to go here in the second period of a 3-2 Mustangs lead. Did you find yourself bitten by the golf bug during this past season but figured out you need a golf swing, need some help? Mike Andrewson, a PGA golf professional with the Morris County Park Commission courses, can help. Contact Mike through BeginGolfNow.com to get your swinging gear for the upcoming season and add some more fun to your game. Indoor off-season instruction also available by going to BeginGolfNow.com. Blue line, but kept in there. Board battles coming out of all this. Another blue line hold. Uh, this one by Josephek. Oh, check that. That's number five of Brandon Wiederman and a save made by Prelick, and he holds on. Jersey Thunder Lacrosse is one of the biggest club lacrosse and lax training organizations in Morris and Sussex counties. Visit them at jerseythunderlax.com to join one of their girls or boys teams today. Penalty on the play, and it goes to Mo against Montville, the number 17 of Matthew Trafari. Yeah, it looks like it was a little bit of a uh, cross check there in front of the net. So another power play is on for Mendham. And a nice save on a deflection in front by Pralink. And out comes the Mustangs the other way. A blast from 90 is shepherded wide. That was a great job getting that left pad out there by Pralink, who's uh, very, very quietly had a very solid game tonight for Montville. Onside skiing into the zone. Puck worked out to the blue line and does get out to center, barely. Goggins cross ice pass finds the mark and back into the zone onside. Blake Stevens takes a look at his options, goes around the net. Still Blake Stevens with it. Wants to, then goes back to the blue line to Mac Goggin. And pressured there, steps around the Chang check. Here's a shot, a riser on a deflection. Stave made, rebound, jammed at still. And then finally, Prelick finds the puck through traffic and holds on. 1.35 to go here in the second of a 3-2 Mustang lead. I've probably tossed my, uh, my card down about three or four times in this one because I'm like, it's like, oh, this is getting fun out here. Yeah, this has been an excellent hockey game to this point. Um, neither team really dominating. Both have had their stretches of controlling play, but um, it's been very competitive out here tonight. Sean Cato moves it along despite the check of Aiden Engel. Engel takes a look again, and Puck evades him that time. Cross ice pass, finding Grant McClung in front. Shot blocked down, and a save made by Prelick. Rebound behind the net, worked to the blue line, held there by Cato, winds and then fires a wrist shot, blocked down again in front, and then flipped up and out of the zone. 22 on counting on the power play, this goes right on goal. 53 in counting in the second period. Onside, skate Cameron, no, Michael Gianco. And a shot by Aiken, head goes up and wide. Rebound on goal, save made. Still the loose battle for filing to the blue line. 
cross ice pass to Caddo. Sean Caddo checked on the play by Aiden Engel. Behind the net, power play is over. Mendham one for three with the man advantage. Toe drag shot at the crossbar and goes out of play. Yeah, Montville has, uh, they've been hanging on for the last couple minutes here. Um, at this point, I think you're just trying to get to the uh, get to the intermission here and try to regroup during that five-minute break and just get to the intermission with that 3-2 to two lead has got to be pri primary goal number one for them right now. Face off to the left of goaltender Adrian Prelick, who's turned aside 18 shots so far tonight. Here's another opportunity, Prelick to save, and he covers the rebound. Continue, you got two more shots on that one, but Prelick continues to play well in nets for the Mustangs. Yeah, these last couple of minutes especially, he's been outstanding, really, uh, really preserving this lead for Montville. This is going to be chipped up and out to center. Back for this, Matt Goggin. One pass, and then the second is off the mark. Collision at center ice. That both sides might have been glancing for a penalty. As this goes all the way down for icing. Trey Beresic thought he got a, a glove up high on that one. 3.2 seconds to go here in the period. So a chance for Montville to extend the lead if they can win the faceoff cleanly. They do. Rest shot save made Tambawala. And that's a big save to finish the period. Yeah, if that found its way in, then suddenly you get a two-goal lead for Montville going into the third. Um, and that was that was good work by Montville to at least create an opportunity there, um, even with just three seconds left on the clock off that faceoff. Shots on goal in the second period. 13 for, Ma uh, for Mendo. Goal in the second period. Montville with eight. Mendo yep. with 13. 13 to 8 in favor of Mendham. Two period total, 22 to 16. Timeout here on Mars Sussex Sports. 3 2 to score after two periods of play. about catering to me and specializing in diet that was fit for my body and my needs. When you come see Dr. Nesbaum, you have his whole team here to help you, whether it be cool sculpting, the balloon, the surgery, no matter what it is, they won't stop helping you until you reach your goals. It was the best decision I've ever made. I lost almost 80 pounds. I'm just a happier overall person. Your future? It's on. Goals are on. Learning is on. With CCM, the County College of Morris. Online. On point. On your terms. Over 80 majors. Major help. My career guidance. Number one in alumni salaries in New Jersey. Success is on. With CCM, the County College of Morris. Sign up now for summer and fall semester. Philippone is a New Jersey-based law firm 
with offices in Morristown and Hazlitt. Devoted to providing quality legal representation and personal attention in the areas of residential and commercial real estate, estate planning, and personal injury. Contact Joe Philippone at 732-203-0060 or by email at jphilippone at cf-lawfirm.com. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. Welcome back here to Men in Arena, getting ready for the start of the third period. 3-2 our score between Mendham and Montville. Montville with the lead. Brett Luther, Mike Gurn is here with you. And it has been an entertaining game, to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, this is, uh, it's lived up to the hype. You know, uh, these are two teams, like we mentioned before, they're trying to kind of trying to find their way so far this season. And it has been a very, very competitive game. You know, as we mentioned earlier, not really one team necessarily dominating play. Both have had their stretches, and um, it's been very equal between these teams. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, Montville can hang on here in the third period and get their first division win. And, of course, I mean, obviously, with top of the division, one side in front, just wide. Everybody's chasing Madison, but, you know, again, as we've noticed... Whether it be, you know, whether it be the men in division, all the men in division, everybody's tough, but whether it be the Halverson or the Haas or even the Charette, you want to avoid top seed. Yes, absolutely. And that's gonna, this game's gonna go a long way towards that, I believe. This is slugged up and out of play, getting a stoppage. 38 seconds into the third. Coming into this again. Madison won today. They're 5-0. Roxbury not playing a division game today. Mendham right now 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Kinelon, Kinelon, Jefferson, Sparta, they're down to 1-4-1. One, one. Montville own 2. So spots 2-3-4-5 are in play. Madison pretty much taking spot 1 out of play. There's a blast from the blue line and a save through a screen by Tambawala. Excellent job that by Tim Tambawala to see that puck through his screen and turn it aside. And swung across, goes all the way through. I think the big key for Montville, if they're going to preserve this lead in the third period, they're going to need to try to stay out of the penalty box because those power plays really gave Mendham a little life there at the end of the second. It's in front, and a shot just slides wide. In the corner, the Minutemen controlling. A spin out. Up to the blue line. A wrist shot from there through a screen save, and Prelick holds on. Good shot by Gavin Marshutes. It found its way through a screen, and it was eventually held by Prelick. Face off to come to the right. Of goaltender Adrian Prelick. That shot turned aside, the rebound flipped up, but not out of the zone. And you're really seeing here Mendham turn it up a notch in his third period so far. Yeah, absolutely. It looked like the, uh, you know, they they played very well the last few minutes of the second. They've carried it over here, and um, you know that's what you want to see when you're down a goal. And that shot deflected wide near side corner in front, just goes across and into the opposite corner. And now a foot race in the other direction. The move ahead. Here's Josephek. He gets wiped out. 
And no call in front score! On the loose puck, the Minutemen have tied it at three. It's knocked home in front by Tristan Aikenhead. What a game this has been. Yeah, this is uh, this has been very good. And, you know, the, it's good to see Mendon get rewarded for these last few minutes where they've really started to take control of the play here. Um, you know, a little unfortunate that uh, Josephette goes down there, but luckily for them, Aikenhead was right there to make something happen and tie this game up. Now center ice, and here goes Mendham again. Shane McCarthy tried to throw in coach. Go off the front, didn't want to save the rebound. It's still loose in two great saves by Prelick. That shot turned away. Prelick has been outstanding for Montville in this game. He has really stepped up tonight. Um, there have been a lot of stretches, especially over these last 10 minutes or so, where, where Mendham has had opportunities, and he has kept this game manageable. What a, a pair of saves there by Adrian Prelick. You gotta love the athleticism, yeah. just being able to get across the crease, getting the pad out when he needs to. Um, a lot of good stuff from him tonight. Sorry if I went to 11 on the Richter scale, but it just hap has just so happened to be that way. Yeah, that, I, <laughs> nobody will fault you for that one because that was that, that was a pair of unreal saves by him. Delayed offside, wiped out. Here we go to Mustangs. Long shot, Tambuala steers aside. Big collision along the boards. Getting the better of the collision, which Joseph Palace, number 19. Puck behind the net. Minutemen have to defend a sliding block that. And now here goes Mendham the other way. A sprint out in the other direction, but getting caught up to the number 23, Matt Cooley. Oh, check that. That's 28, Michael Gianco. Now in the other way. Here's Owen O'Hara hit the post. So close for Montville there to retake the lead here. And it's it's funny, the way this game's gone, Mendham, you know, they have these stretches where they'll be in control for a few minutes, and then Montville just comes down and gets one great opportunity. It's just the way it's been. Long shot by Aikenhead, saving a hold on by Prelick getting a stoppage with 10.26 to go in the third period of a 3-3 game. Don't forget after this we have our three stars of the game brought to you by X Hockey Products Pro Shop and DiscountHockey.com. Don't forget also, Barefoot Rehab has an MSS deal. Two case study opportunities for anyone with six or more months of pain who has seen three or more doctors or therapists without permanent relief. Visit them at barefootrehab.com if you would like to see if you're a candidate for permanent pain relief. On goal save made, Pralink and the rebound goes wide. I, there's a few candidates for our player of the game. There's several actually. Here's a rising shot that's blocked off, rebound near side boards. And then out to center, that long shot bounces wide. Now a long pass off the mark. One of those under consideration would be Tristan Aikenhead with two goals and an assist. Mitchell's own play here. Adrian Prelick, another one of those under consideration for 29 saves this night, this evening. So. On side and into the zone. And we still got 9.23 to play in front and poked away. The rebound still sits loose and finally off the boards and out the center. What more can we ask for out of this game? Yeah, this, is, uh, this has been a wonderful, wonderful hockey game tonight. And you know, it's going to be an interesting final nine minutes here to see if we can get a winner out of this one. Nothing would surprise me. Yeah, no, I, I think this can go. This is at a uh, point where I think this game goes either way. Onside, nearly a two on one, but a good stick lifting job preventing Austin Bailey from getting further into the zone. Checking a hard one at that, put on along the boards. A blue line shot, same made. Tambawala did not control the rebound. 
Out to the blue line, Owen O'Hara shot, steered aside and in towards the near boards in front, and a save by Tampa Wall, and he holds. Austin Bailey was right there on the doorstep. Um, Tampa Wall was able to get over, but man, that was uh, about as good of an opportunity as you're going to see right there. Oh, my. Oh, also, though, give a stick tap there to Shane McCarthy, number 13. He tied up Bailey's stick just enough that yeah. he wasn't able to get full wood on it. Yeah, looking at the replay there, that was that was quite a play by him. And now a two-on-one to go in the other way. Score! Bar down! An amazing shot that time by Ian Tampawala. Four, three, Minutemen. Oh, my. You are not going to get many more well-placed shots than that. Six fifty time of the goal. And I mean, that was barred down to the highest levels. Yeah, an outstanding goal there from uh, from Ian Tambawala. If you're going to score your first career and goal, goal you do it in style. Five. Absolutely. With assist from number 28, Gianco. Time of the goal, 650 of the third So first career goal for Tampa. Wow, we have a lot of firsts in this one. Welcome to the Met. Welcome to the Morris. And now the skate out the other way, and it's a two-on-three now. A move in, drop pass. Aiken had a save made. The rebound still loose. Everybody bowls in. No goal. The puck's outside the crease. Some pushing and shoving afterwards. This has been a hotly contested game. Very intense. And it's still going with 7.27 to go into third. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, getting very competitive. It's going to get a little chippy now here in the third. Um, you know, now I think for Montville, the key is going to be settle things down a little bit. You've given up a couple goals there in a span of a few minutes. Um, you just got to settle down. Keep in mind, it's just a one goal game. You got you got about seven and a half minutes left to go here. Um, still a lot of hockey left to be played and just don't let this game get away from you. Base off neutral ice control by the Minutemen. Uh, <laughs> well, again, <laughs> We've had some first goals of the season, but I think that one was the was the the best of them. Yeah, Big hit put on by the way. Yeah, I don't think anyone will argue that one. That was quite a shot. It was a perfect shot. Yeah, can't place it any better. Another wrist shot deflected in front and swept off the goal line. That was uh, Matthew Kroll who yep. uh, cleared that off the goal line. Outstanding play by them. Saved the goal. Deflected into the Minutemen zone. We still have 6.45 to go in this third period. Aren't you glad you tuned into this on Morris Sussex Sports? Yeah, it skips wide. Yeah, anyone who's not watching, what are you doing? Right. Right. Uh, it's just a, an amazing game. Yeah. A final, by the way, at Skylands. Newton Lenape Valley six and High Point Wallkill Valley three. Big win for Newton Lenape Valley. That's that's an impressive one for them. I know they've struggled a little bit this year, but um, a very good win for them. Putting six home tonight. They only scored 12 goals all season. So they got half of that in this one game. Yeah, that's, and that's a good win for that program. Two and four now, Newton in the division on the season. High point drops to two, two and one in the division. Makes things a little interesting there. Yeah, that Charette division, it's going to be very interesting to see how things unfold yeah. there. Because you got, you know, I don't think anybody expected Morris Catholic to be such a factor in that division. But it looks like they're, they're going to be right there in the mix. You got High Point, you got Bernard's. Um, it, it's going to be a really interesting next couple of weeks to see how things uh, finish out there. The BSM team at 4-2-1, Mars Catholic at 3-1. 
Puck up to the blue line and not out though. Uh, pass goes all the way across. Picking this up now, Michael Gianco. Throws behind the net once more. Still on and now a centering feed, no one home. Connor Perez skates away with the puck. Center ice, cross ice pass. Going ahead, Austin Bailey. Bailey is onside and into the zone. Tried to center out in front, that's broken up. Rebound, corralled. Sent up the wall and out of the minute, man will have a two on two the other way. With 5.18 to go here in the third. Dip of the shoulder, moving around Gianco. Check on the play in the corner. Puck comes to the near side of the ice. And now the Mustangs will look to start up again. Long pass intercepted, and I'm not sure. Too many men on the ice is going to be the call. That was a long pass that was intercepted. Unfortunately, they hadn't made the complete change, and so a power play for Montville at a crucial juncture. Yeah, that is a tough penalty for Menden to take at this point in the game. You got 5.03 to go, and you're trying to protect a one-goal lead. Um, that, that's a tough one, but a big opportunity for Montville to make something happen here. Off the draw, turn around, shot, score! Connor Perez has tied it four. What a shot there from the left circle. I, I got to see the replay on this one, but another well-placed shot. Yeah, just a turnaround there and a beaut. Yeah, it's funny, Perez won the faceoff. Puck was behind him and it got passed to him. He was completely uncovered there in the left circle and he just sniped it home. Just uh, good work by him there. So Perez has got his second of the game and fourth of the season. And, and now Montville's got a penalty. And I'm not sure what for. Unsportsmanlike? I'm Question guess, mark? Yeah, I'm guessing that's got to be the call, but since it happened after the whistle, but I guess we will see. We'll wait for the announcement. Either way, a power play goal and a crucial one. But now Mendham on the man advantage. A long pass on ahead to Josephek. Pulls up right wing circle. Feeds back to the blue line. Matt Goggin steps away and then Josephek again. Takes a look. Wants to go diagonal intended for Stevens, but that was broken up. Still battled for behind the net. Goal, the power play Finally worked free. Connor Perez. Time the goal, 10 -01. The calling it an unassisted goal. goal. Shot through a screen wide. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. I thought that getting an assist possibly was Steven, but we have to wait and see. This gets sent out. Back in the zone, that shot deflected into the corner. Yep. There's the call, unsportsmanlike. Probably something, something in the verbal variety. Puck worked around in towards the far side corner. 39 on the man advantage, and this puck will get cleared up and out to center. All back in. There's a shot and a save made and held on to. Very good kill by Montville so far. Not really giving up a whole lot of great opportunities here. Um, you know, this is exactly what you want to do if you're trying to preserve a point out of this game. And a timeout's going to be called here with 3.25 to go. Mendham, I believe, has called the timeout. Huntington Learning Center in Morristown. There's still time to turn this school know, year around. Midterms haven't been just finished. The so finals are coming up soon, and there's no better time to contact us at the Learning Center of Morristown than now. Call 973-292-9265 to learn more about how our certified teachers can help your students today. 
This game also brought to you by F45 of East Hanover. The F stands for functional training, a mix of circuit and hit style workouts geared towards everyday movement. 45 is the total amount of time for sweat, dripping, heart pumping fun. Visit them at f45training.com slash East Hanover. And uh, we're going to have an interesting time with our three stars of the game in this one. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a tough one. Just so many so many players have really stood out in this game. Yeah. It's going to be hard to narrow it down to three. This is where you go three and a boatload of honorable mentions. Yeah. I just, I mean, for the first game, uh, you know, for most of these parents back in the stands, as we just got parents allowed back in, fans allowed back in as of yesterday, boy, are they being treated to a dandy. Yeah, and it's got to be thrilling for them to be back in the arena and get to see such a good game. We're glad you can be joining us here on Mario Sussex Sports. Brett Luthner, Mike Gurness here at Menon Arena. Mike's going to have some writing to do in the Mar Sussex, Mar Sussex Hockey Report later on tonight. <laughs> yep, it's going to be tough. In front is knocked wide. The rebound is covered. He'll be typing away. Vincenzo and I will be going to shop right after the last game to pick up some last-minute odds and ends, maybe a Valentine's gift or two. <laughs> yeah, I think I might be putting the typing off until tomorrow morning, honestly. <laughs> Especially since I'm not going to be around the family tomorrow because I'll be, I'll be in Wayne and then here. And I better dig. I better dig a path to the shed. <laughs> Yeah, because my equipment bag's in there. Oh, boy. A couple of players are being switched off here. Taking the face off will be Michael Gianco. This is one back. Rashad and a kick save made by Pralik. Rebound in the corner. It's another 40-shot performance for Mendham here. Diagonal pass intercepted. This will be skated up and dumped all the way down. Power play is over. So Mendham is now two for four with the man advantage. This gets sent all the way down. It'll be icing. I'm sorry, Mendham is one for four with the man advantage. Montville is two for three. Very good kill by Montville there, especially at this stage in the game. Obviously, you want to try to avoid the penalties when uh, you're trying to preserve a point out of the game, but good job with the penalty kill. Diagonal pass goes all the way out. Now all the way down to Prelin, who will play it aside. Up the board's not out of the zone. The game, though, has been played at a high level not just in terms of the play on the ice, but also in the terms of the intensity and the pace. Absolutely. This has been a uh, great game between two, two really good teams. Slugged into the zone around Tim Tambawala. Uh, check it, yeah, Tim Tambawala's goal. Watches behind, man goes down. Uh, that being the number 24 of Grant McClung. You're getting close to the stage of the game where barring something obvious, not much is going to get called. Yeah, you got to let him play at this point. Where shots he made and held on to by Prelick. I mean, there's a thing of letting him play, but hey, this is, you have, it's got to be pretty obvious. I'm, we're not saying back in the 70s and 80s where it was either blood breakaway or break. You know? Yeah. That was one of the three. Timeout's now going to be called by Montville. Timeout, yep. Montville. Back in the 70s and 80s, and before that, too. Unless, it was, unless you drew blood, took out a breakaway, or broke, broke the guy's whatever, you weren't going to get a penalty call. Nowadays, it's a little bit different. You know, it's just if it's an obvious penalty, it gets called. But, you Absolutely. Know, for, for something, you know, that, you know, would have been called in periods one and two. It might not, you know, 
two guys get tied up, you might not get the call here in the third. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think the uh, the borderline stuff you got to let go at this point because uh, you don't you don't want to call to, to, to determine the outcome of the game. Right. That's the last thing you want. Don't forget to like this game. Share our games all over the place on socials, please. Subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Click that notification bell to follow along all season long. Participate in our selfies, too. Follow us at Marsus Sports. You see it up the top there. Uh, just all sorts of stuff, and we hope that you follow along all season here on Mars Sussex Sports. 144 to go, third period in a 4-4 game. And what a game it's been. No one, or the, actually one team did have a two-goal lead. That was Montville early, but that was all the way back early in the first period. Mendham tied it before that period would end, and we've been close ever since. The look up, the pass by Trafari is intercepted. I thought that broke the glass for a moment, but no. The puck hit flat off the glass. You can see the mark of the puck on the glass right now, or at least the snow from it. That'll soon melt away and drip down. Now escape the other way. Connor Perez throws a cross that goes around now. Far side corner. Perez couldn't control that hot pass. And this goes up and out to center. Deflected neutral zone. Bounces around on a dasher. There's another soft bump from behind. Those are not going to get called in the third period. No, Didn't absolutely get not. Didn't get called earlier either. That's a hard hit that time and a good one by Blake Stevens. Neutral zone with this puck. Gathered now by Crow. Back for this is Sean Caddo. Center ice and a flip in. And it's going to be icing. Caddo did not gain the red line. And a faceoff will go all the way into Minutemen zone with 41.2 seconds to go in a 4 4 game. <laughs> did I say buckle your seatbelts? Yep, we got 40, 41 seconds to go and. Uh... We'll see exactly what happens here. See if one of these teams can put home the game winner. Men and me is the fifth guy out there. Yeah, you don't want to go out there with four guys if you don't have to. Gianco against Perez in the faceoff circle. Big win by Gianco, and he keeps the puck. Pass on ahead. Here goes Josevic. He gets hauled down in a penalty call. And that's, yeah. that's an obvious one, I think. Yep. The aforementioned obvious penalty, and it was called there with 32 seconds to go. Yeah, and he knew it right away. That's that's a tough tough penalty to take at this point in the game. And if you're Montville now, it's just try to get through these next 32 seconds. Tripping call on Austin Bailey. Power play number five for, Me uh, for Mendham. They're one for four. Josephek, Aikenhead, Gianco's out there, Mac Goggins out there in front of the net. Now it looks like it's Gavin Marshutes. Up top, Aikenhead throws towards goal. It's wide of the net. In front of the net, Barasic is one of the penalty killers. Up to the blue line, not out. Second effort, not out as well. Kroll got stripped from behind. Wrist shot whistles off the glass. Connor Perez, one of the penalty killers as well. Here's a shot that's blocked off Michael Chang, the fourth. Another shot that gets the glass with two to go. Turn around in front. Save made the rebound. Turned aside. And we'll finish 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> what a frantic final seconds there. It didn't look like Mendham was really going to have an opportunity. But then, you know, right there at the buzzer, a couple opportunities. And Prelick, like he's done all night, comes up with a big save. Take a break. We'll come back. Three stars of the game. 4-4 four, four, our final here at Menon Arena. At Ivy Rehab, we're here for you after your surgery. We're here when you're in a rush. When you're in pain. When you're aching. When you don't have a prescription. <sighs> we're here to get to the root cause of your pain instead of just masking your symptoms. We're here. We are here. We're over there, too. We're all over. 
So come to Ivy Rehab first. We'll be here for you. Deloja Cohen LLC is a law firm located in Chester, New Jersey. Although we are local, we provide legal services to businesses, entrepreneurs, governmental entities, and school boards statewide. We provide big firm quality work, but do so with a small firm feel and flexible pricing structure. Our specialties include employment law, labor relations, and commercial litigation. At Ploja Cohen, we are proud to support the local athletes in our community. My name is Stephanie Ramirez. I'm 28 years old. I struggled with weight my whole life. I had the gastric sleeve done. I lost a total of 100 pounds. I'm actually healthier. No more diabetes, no more hypertensive. I would definitely recommend Dr. Nesbaum. Your weight may not be your fault. It could be a metabolic or hormonal problem. To learn more, come in for a free seminar. Go to NussbaumMedicalCenters.com or call 973-998-9833 to schedule a... The Nussbaum Weight Loss Center is actually designed to help patients whether they have five pounds to lose or 500 pounds to lose. They're very helpful with um, explaining everything. You feel very comfortable. They walk you through everything. I am now the person I always knew I was inside. I lost about 100 pounds. Altogether, I've lost 80 pounds. I lost about 100 pounds. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nussbaum, for giving me my life back. I'm Dr. Michael Nussbaum. If you're struggling to lose weight, call us at the Nussbaum. So it's been four years since I got the Neograft hair transplant procedure done, and I look and feel good when I look in the mirror. Guys, I know there's a lot of cures out there for hair loss, but the best solution is to ask your doctor about the Neograft hair transplant. There's no linear scar, little to no downtime, and it's your own hair going back on your head, and that is amazing. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Nussbaum. If you're struggling with thinning hair or hair loss, we can help you. Visit us at myfullhair.com. Back here on our Sussex Sports, it's time for X Hockey Products Pro Shop and DiscountHockey.com. Three stars of the game. Brought to you by X Hockey Products Pro Shop and DiscountHockey.com. Proud to support New Jersey high school hockey. From sharpenings and repairs to custom uniforms and apparel, they are your trusted local supplier. And if you can't find what you need in the store here at Men in Arena, DiscountHockey.com ships in one day to New Jersey. So many honorable mentions in this one. First career goals all over the place. Trey Barasic got his first career goal. Also first career goal for Chris Armolino. First career goal for Ian Tambawal, which was an absolute snipe bar down. Uh, but our three stars in game. Third star goes to Adrian Prelick with 40 saves. Second star to uh, the number 11, Tristan Aikenhead with two goals and one assist. And then the game tying goal and two goal night for Connor Perez. He is our number one star, but I mean, you could have flip-flopped any of them, really. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was just one of those games where uh, so many kids stood out. I mean, I think those three are without question the three stars, but I think any order you go in, you can't go wrong. And by the way, the other one that scored that we didn't mention, Griffin Josevec, he also had a pretty good game with the goal and an assist as well. But our final score here, we end up tied at four between Mendham and Montville coming up next in about 15 minutes or so our final game of the evening it's an inter interconference game interleague game if you will the Verona Hillbillies come into town at the NN at the NJIIHL they'll take on Park Regional uh, to come up at 8 15 they'll make it 8 20 or so right here on Mars Sussex Sports uh, again our great crew around here uh Doing a great job as always, Vinny on the on the production, Vincenzo Sebastiano, I should say, uh, on the production, and Mr. Catello on the camera as well. For my broadcast partner in all this, Mike Gernis, my name is Brett Luther. Four for the final score. We'll see you in about 15 or 20 minutes for the nightcap here on Mars Sussex Sports.